disciples, and welcome to another episode of Imagine With Me. When I get an opportunity to talk with creative and innovative leaders across the life of our church. Today, I'm excited to have the leaders of the three ministries that we refer to as the financial ministries. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. But the leaders of the Christian Church Foundation, the Pension Fund of the Christian Church, and the Disciples of Christ uh, Church Extension Fund. Uh, so we're so excited to have uh, Gary Kidwell, Todd Adams, and Belinda King with us today. Welcome, my friends and colleagues. I'm, I'm so glad that you all took the time. Uh, you're, you're busy people, as are we all. So thank you for taking the time uh, to talk to the church. Um, I know that you all know that uh, sometimes we can assume uh, that people and congregations know a lot about general church ministry, and they often don't know as much as they need to know. And so we wanted to have this opportunity for people to learn more about your three ministries. So, so Gary, I'll start with you uh, as the, the senior statesman, so, so to speak. Uh, you've been with the Christian Church Foundation in general ministry for quite a while. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, the foundation, and, and give us a hint of some exciting things that are happening with the foundation. Thank you. Yeah, as they say, age before beauty, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Gary Kidwell, I am... Um, I'm, I'm a product of the Christian Church in Kentucky, and um, <clears throat> or, uh, graduated and ordained, um, graduated from Lexington Seminary and ordained in 1981, and I've been in general ministry since uh, 91, and um, my story is much like uh, uh, a lot of, of servants of the church. I never imagined I'd be here. Um, I always thought that when I made the commitment to ministry, that my only ministry would be in the parish. And uh, I was able to serve um, a student church in Sparta, Kentucky, and served the church in Walton, Kentucky, and then was part of a new church start in Lexington before coming to the general ministries. And then all of a sudden, I looked around and I realized that my my calling is at the intersection of money and ministry. And um, <clears throat> for some reason, I'm not sure how I let this happen, but Todd Adams introduced me at some event. And um, <clears throat> he, he introduced me um, as, as having a Bible in one hand and the Wall Street Journal in the other. <laughs> and that was actually, that's actually kind of the way my, my ministry is shaped up. So uh, some things happened at the Christian Church Foundation. I've been, I've been with the foundation since 1998 and um, have been privy, privileged to be a part of, of, a, of, uh, of a tremendous growing ministry when I joined staff. The foundation's assets were about a hundred and somewhere around 130 million. And last year we crossed um, in total assets of over a billion dollars. So that's tremendous growth. And that's not about us. <clears throat> that's about, that's, that's really just as a witness of the, of the love that, that um, people across the life of the church have for disciples and for the ministries that disciples are doing so it's been a been a great uh, privilege to be a part of that uh, play a small part in the in that tremendous growth i think the most exciting thing happening at the foundation is <clears throat> we are doing more and taking less because mm -hmm. as we have grown as we've accumulated more um, as, as donors have made gifts to us, and as if we, and as ministry, and as partner ministries have invested alongside us, we've used that growth to give back more to the church by lowering our costs. And when we lower our costs, that means more, more dollars, more dollars to mission. And so, we really see our mission as as moving money, as, as moving money to ministry. And uh, so that's, that's the exciting part. Man, that's incredible growth. And I, I've witnessed your passion uh, for that marriage of money and ministry and, and moving 
um, finding people's passion and helping them direct their resources to it. So the whole exactly. church is grateful for that. I'm going to turn to the newest member of, of this group, um, Belinda King, who is the new uh, president of Disciples Church Extension Fund, uh, a historic choice, first woman and first person of color to be in this role. So congratulations again, Belinda, as you're now, what, seven months into the role? Uh, so I invite you to, to share a little bit about yourself and, and to tell folks a little bit about what's happening with DCEF and some exciting things going on there. Thank you, Reverend Terry. I appreciate and am humbled to be here. My name again is Belinda King, and I am the new person. However, I am not new um, to Disciples Church Extension Fund or to the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. I've actually been serving um, DCEP that we call ourselves for short um, for 10 years before coming on in January as the new president and uh, CEO. But I've also been a member and still is obviously a member of Light of the World Christian Church. I have been doing this work with Christian Church for 30 plus years. Um, so, uh, and so I'm not new to the Christian Church. I've served, I am um, laity. And so not only am I the newest person, I'm also a lay leader in this, but I am very proud of, the, of that effort because I've been very involved um, in every part of the church from serving my church in every leadership role um, there is and also serving the, um, the Indiana region as well as now serving the greater church. So I'm excited um, to do that. When I joined Disciples Church Extension Fund 10 years ago, um, I came from the commercial lending banking industry where I served in big conglomerate banks to small local uh, local banks. So I've seen um, every side and facet of that. And of course, when I was in those banks, people always called me the church lady because I wanted to always do churches. I navigated to that. No one else wanted to do church loans um, or help the churches. And that just was a natural uh, ministry for me. Of course, when I come fast forward and come to Disciples Church Extension Fund, then with the financial skills and uh, and talent that came along with that, I got started being called the bank lady. So there we are. <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, I'm excited um, on the things that Disciples Church Extension Fund is doing. Um, our role here is that we get to we get to guide our disciples congregations um, to use all of their assets and their buildings, their finances um, and the people to take their ministry to the next level. Um, I often say our motto is uh, when churches thrive, we thrive. And so we have a vested interest in doing that um, with our congregations. Our passion and people um, drive these ministries. Um, they know what they're doing, and we're just there alongside to, to guide them along that way. And so uh, with their finances, one of the um, some things that we are excited about is the main thing that I'm mostly excited about is, you know, watching our churches now emerge from the last two and a half years and um, with the new confidence and commitment about their ministry. Um, and so that has been uh, exciting to see. Um, I think there was a time when we were uh, comfortable in our pews and and we just you know, we, we used our building as our anchor. And so now we are realizing that our building is a way now um, in order to do ministry. And it's just, it's, it's, a pro, it's a process in getting there. And so as our congregations learn to be faithful um, in the new things, I'm excited about the ways in which Disciples Church Extension Fund um, continues to guide our congregations coming out with um, some new things that we'll be sharing in regional assemblies and of course, general assembly um, as we do this work in a different way in light of our current situation. Thank you so much, Belinda. We're excited uh, that you're now uh, in, in that leadership role and that you'll continue to serve uh, DCEF well. Full disclosure, a lot of the world's Christian church, my home congregation. So you and I have known each other for, for many, many years. Um, so it, it's great to work with you in this new way. Um, the, and now I'll turn to the ministry. Wherever the pension fund is named, people always say, thank God for the pension fund. And so we, we welcome the Reverend Dr. Todd Adams, who's the current president of the Pension Fund of the Christian Church. Uh, thanks, Todd. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry and, 
what's happening with the pension fund. Thanks, Terry. It's good to be with you all today. Uh, Todd Adams, I am a product of the Christian Church in Oklahoma. And um, but more importantly, I think I'm a product of Disciples Mission Fund. I can look at uh, my call to ministry and see the different places where Disciples Mission Fund made that call possible, whether it was church camp growing up here in Oklahoma or Disciples related scholarships at Chapman and Phillips and then having the opportunity to serve in the office of the general minister and president for eight and a half years before coming to the pension fund staff. But um, I'm a, again, a product, a child of the church and pleased to be um, in this chair serving on behalf of our pastors at pension fund. We steward $3.9 billion um, in assets and we do so understanding that that money belongs to our members and that we make member centric decisions when it comes to stewarding those assets and that we get to invest uh, with the faith and the teachings of the church that definitely shape our decision making. We're also privileged to be one of 75 non-bank trustees in the U.S. So mm -hmm. I think it's um, an interesting place for us to be at this unique intersection of finance and mission as a highly regulated financial institution. And I think all three of us have different parts of the, the tax code and the federal statutes that we have to comply with that that make us different in the work that we do, uh, but also getting to do so through the lens of ministry, stewarding the assets of ministerial relief and assistance and ensuring the strong, smart, secure retirement for each of our pastors and church workers. Kind of on the new initiative front right now for us at Pension Fund, um, literally this morning signed the ink on the contract uh, with a marketing consulting firm who will be helping us to look at historically underserved communities in the life of the church and how we might better relate to those communities. Many of them are communities of color, but also are bi and tri-vocational pastors. And we are an employer-sponsored, employer-oriented um, retirement okay. provider, but as a non-bank trustee, we also have the opportunity for individuals to save with us uh, resources that they accumulate in other places. And so this diversity, equity, accessibility, and belonging initiative will really carry us forward into the next 100 plus years of service as we look forward uh, to the future. Great that is, thanks, Todd. Um, that's exciting news. And uh, again, wherever the pension fund is, is mentioned, I see you in lots of places presenting honored ministers pens to, to recent retirees and, and people are always uh, so grateful for uh, the provision uh, that is offered to them because of the, of the pension fund. Um, your point about reaching historically underserved communities leads me uh, to another question. Uh, we call your three ministries uh, the financial ministries, and we know that, as you've mentioned, you all operate under various uh, forms of regulation um, that you that kind of creates a firewall in many cases between you and the rest of the church. But how do you see yourselves as part of the whole church, and, and how? Um, do, do, this, uh, do these financial ministries help the church really live in covenant with one another? And, and I open up the floor to anybody who'd like to begin answering that question. How do you see yourself as part of the whole church? Well, I'll jump in. I think when we think about clergy, because um, that's the part of the church that we serve, we partner with the congregations as the employer. But when they covenant at the point of ordination or they covenant at the point of entering seminary, pension fund starts their relationship with them. And that relationship is not just about getting to a magic age where you've accumulated a certain amount of money or a certain amount of credits and can retire well. It's a relationship that continues throughout. So our programs around excellence in ministry, um, learn to live, our online mental health program that we've launched this last year, your money line, all of those pieces uh, that we offer to help keep people healthy and get them mentally, physically, spiritually, healthy throughout their uh, ministry to get them to that place of retirement so they can enjoy it. I think that's part of the way that our Alpha and Omega logo uh, from the beginning, your first day uh, of seminary, all the way through your last breath, we're there with you and we're helping to uphold the church's covenant to support ministry and to be there for the support of ministry. Amen. Amen. 
I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I, I feel like these three ministries, Disciples Church Extension Fund, Christian Church Foundation, or the foundation as we often refer to them as, and the pension fund all have assets that really can be translated um, into the ministry. Just like our congregations, we need to be able to allow you know, our net assets to become an anchor, as I kind of mentioned before. We'd like our churches um, to be, and need our churches to be creative using the financial resources um, as a launch pad for their ministry. And so Christians, as Christians, we don't, you know, get extra points or brownie points or anything like that for amazing wealth, but what we're called to do with the financial um, um, responsibility that we have. And so our financial ministries can really model um, for our congregation what it looks like to continue to use everything that we have and all that we have um, as financial organizations in order to make sure that our congregations are empowered to be the body of Christ in the world that we have been called to do and to and to and to be okay with know that it takes financial resources in order to do mm -hmm. this. Uh, and tag on and to tag on to that, to what Todd and 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 Belinda have both said. None of us are vendors. We are ministry partners. And we were created by the church for the church. And so every part of our work is we, you know, we have legal fiduciary responsibilities. But we even, but we have a higher calling. And that is every dollar which we receive every dollar which we manage we have a responsibility to care for that because it's god's money mm -hmm. and and um you're not going to get that from a vendor mm -hmm. so as we work with congregations as we work with regions as we work with general ministries as we work with all our ministry partners i know that that the foundation the pension fund and church extension we never do what's best for our, min our, our ministry. We're there to do what's best for the church because again, we were created by the church to serve the church and we have a higher calling, which means that we have a, a greater responsibility to um, not only care for the resources, but to use those resources in as 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 a as as a way in which we can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and and carry out our mission to serve the whole world and to serve everyone. So I mean that's why we're our ministries are involved you know with interfaith on Center for Corporate Responsibility, for example. Um, you know, we have taken stands on human rights, on racial, on racial equality. Um, just for you know, just one small example. I know that in this latest proxy season, we were advocates for um, calling companies to to do racial equality edits. I mean, audits, racial equality audits, and you know, that's making a difference. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think. The great, the great misconception sometimes is that there are, there are, there are ministries that are social witness, and then there are ministries that that manage money. Mm -hmm. We're both of those. I think that's a really important point to uh, to make, Gary and Todd. You made reference. Um, to not only, <clears throat> excuse me, not only the marketing efforts um, that are, are looking at uh, serving at historically underserved communities, but you've gone through your own racial equity um, work as well. I may want to throw that question back out. Uh, we talk about being the church that we say we are. We have wonderful language that say we're a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world as part of the one body of Christ. We welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us and that we're a pro-reconciling anti-racist church. How are uh, what? Uh, give us some examples of ways in which your ministries help us live into that. And um, Gary, you've mentioned some some sort of responsible investing 
uh, the racial audit, uh, other examples of the way these ministries uh, reflect uh, who disciples are and, and are living into who we say we are. Well, in a very tangible way for us at Pension Fund, uh, we just um, hired a new member for our call center. So we're able to now you know, press one for Spanish preferred. And so we have four fully bilingual employees who can assist those uh, members who are Spanish preferred and can help bridge the gap rather than someone who doesn't speak Spanish trying to, you know, find somebody who can and, and explain and, uh, you know, to somebody uh, what they're trying to do. Um, and, you know, and then around our strategic initiative, but it's also about um, the way in which our board is structured. Uh, we have 45% um, persons of color on our board of directors now at Pension Fund, which is the largest percentage we've ever had. Uh, representing the diversity of the church, but not any one of those individuals is there simply because of their racial ethnic background. These are qualified, competent industry professionals, leaders, pastors, members, actuaries, accountants, auditors, attorneys, you name it, um, who also happen to be part of our racial ethnic constituencies in the life of the church. And so I think part of that is intentionality, right? So. Um, it's easy to go with your network and who you know, and it, it's, but the challenge and the call of church is for us to be intentional in everything that we do, whether it's board development, investment selection, uh, hiring and recruiting staff, expectations for training around racial ethnic diversity and our pro-reconciliation anti-racism priority. Those are decisions we make as leaders and ways in which we are covenant partners with the church and ways in which the church also helps to hold us accountable uh, to do the work the church calls us to do. I'd looked up a couple of examples. We partnered, we've been partnering with uh, Disciples Women mm -hmm. in the whole area of uh, human trafficking. And, um, you know, it's one thing just to um, call for change. It's another to, to, to leverage uh, our resources and, and the resources of pension fund and church extension and other ministry partners to say to a company, look, um, why don't you examine your supply chain and mm -hmm. in ways in which you are a part of human trafficking? That's just, mm -hmm. you know, that's just one example. Another example, we, we, we became very involved in the um, campaign against ghost guns, which are unregistered um, guns. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that Todd and Belinda have been a part of that. Um, you know, we, we are all uh, involved in the human rights uh, coalition. Um, so there are all sorts of ways in which we as ministry partners can resource each other um, and, um, and, 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 and frankly, when you get down to m many of the human rights and, and, and uh, equality issues, they are very much economic issues. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's some of the power that you all have demonstrated that the church is committed um, to that kind of justice as we live into being uh, an anti-racist church, a, a movement for wholeness in a world that, that is so fragmented and, and ensuring that we're serving underserved uh, populations as well. Um, Belinda, is there anything that you'd like to say? We're about to wrap up, but I wanted you to weigh in on that last question if you had anything you wanted to add. Uh, yes, I just wanted to add um, is I, I'm, I am excited that we are, are doing things um, as a financial ministries out there, but I also want to honestly recognize that we still have a ways to go. But some things that Disciples Church Extension Fund um, is doing is we have had um, a part of our policies and our procedures from hiring um, to how we do our lending practices to making sure that there are particular loans and interest-free loans set aside um, for our racially ethnic congregations. And so um, those are things that we have been doing and need to do more of. Uh, we also obviously have a separate anti-racism pro-reconciliation team or APR, a, ARPR team that we call who leads that effort in everything that we do from our policies, like we're reviewing our entire policies and procedures in our handbook, and they will have a say in that before it actually is finalized before our board. And of course, we continue to have the um, 
the balance on our board members and intentional, which is what Todd said. I like that because we are intentional in who's on there and the gifts that they bring, but also recognizing that. And then the last thing is we have actually set aside funding um, and we have begun conversations through our ARPR team to work um, alongside of all of the ethnic um, racial ministries as to how we do this work together. And so that, that's that's some of the things that we're doing and to continue to do as we move yeah. forward. I think that's a wonderful way to close the loop, the intentionality, right? That it requires all of us to, to live into ministry uh, so that we don't just have wonderful language, but we're actually uh, living in to be uh, the church that we say we are. And what tremendous partners we have in the three of you and the ministries that, that you represent uh, it's been great to have you with us today. And I hope that congregations and anyone who is listening, make sure your pastor's in the pension fund. Make sure uh, that clergy um, who are part of your community understand uh, the benefits that are there from the online assistance to financial wellness programs like Thriving Ministry, um, the, the online mental health, um, encouraging people who have a passion uh, for forgiving to connect with the Christian Church Foundation as a way to figure out how you can share your resources uh, with the whole church. And then as a, as a pastor, I had to get a new heating system uh, when I was a local congregation. And uh, my the chair of my church council was looking at banks. I was like, banks, we have a bank, uh, the Disciples Church Extension Fund. And so uh, I was able to make them aware of that. And so there's so much support and consultation uh, that DCEF provides for congregations about using their resources. And as you said, Belinda, how we're expanding uh, beyond the use of our buildings or, or re, uh, repurposing, in some cases, existing buildings and, and thinking about the infrastructure that we need uh, to do ministry in this time. So thanks again to all of you. Uh, and it's been great to have you here on another episode of Imagine With Me. I'm so grateful for your time and all that you do for the church. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Disciples, I just want to thank you again for uh, being with us for this time of, of information and hopefully inspiration. I hope that you understand there's so many ways in which we are church together and our fina financial ministries are certainly our ministry partners. And hopefully something that you've learned today will give you some ideas as to how you can engage with the work of the Pension Fund, the Christian Church Foundation, and Church Extension. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. And in the meantime, remember that God loves you, and so do I. Take care. <laughs>